In physics, we deal a ton with moving charges, specifically electrons. And the cool thing about moving charges is that when they accelerate, they actually radiate energy in the form of photons. The point of this video is to show a visualization of the mathematics behind how these moving electrons radiate. When we take Einstein's special relativity into effect, this has huge effects on how ultra-fast electrons radiate energy. This is known as the beaming effect. In this video, I will provide a brief description of the variables involved, a holistic metaphor for the beaming effect. Then the main part of the video will be split into four parts. Looking at the beaming effect when velocity is parallel to acceleration, then when the velocity is perpendicular to acceleration. And finally, the application of this beaming effect in the physical example of moving electrons in a magnetic field in both 2D and 3D. To start this discussion, let's introduce the main physics theories used. First, we have Einstein's theory of special relativity. You know, that theory that says time and space is relative and gravity is a fabric? Then by bringing in Maxwell, who wrote Maxwell's equations, and really showed how electric and magnetic fields interact, we are able to combine these two theories by combining Einstein and Maxwell, we get the best modern theory for charged particles, E and M, or electricity and magnetism. Now we need to understand a couple of the variables that will be used throughout the video. First is beta, which is basically the velocity. It's the relative velocity to the speed of light. So its value is V over C. And so beta ranges from zero to one, where zero is not moving and one is moving at the speed of light, the fastest it can. The next is gamma, which is a bit more confusing. It's called the Lorentz factor. At gamma equal to one, that is the not moving case. And then as gamma just increases, that's when we get closer and closer to C, where gamma equals infinity is the limit as the velocity goes to C. The entire point of this video is to visualize the beaming effect. So now let me give a sort of brief, holistic overview of what the beaming effect physically does. Though remember, we are dealing with special relativity, so technically all intuition goes out the window. But a good way of thinking about this is to consider a submarine. When it is not moving, it roughly experiences pressure equally from all sides. However, as the sub starts to move, it pushes out the water in front of it, so it experiences more pressure in the front. And it pulls away from the water behind it, so it experiences less pressure from behind. As it starts moving really fast, it ends up experiencing most of its pressure in the front. In a similar way with the beaming effect, we see at high velocities that radiation is effectively pushed to the direction of motion. To visualize the beaming effect, let us look at an electron moving to the right at a constant non-relativistic velocity. That is, beta is close to zero, and gamma is very close to one. Now let us in, add in an acceleration parallel to the velocity. Note that I am not visually showing how the acceleration changes the motion of the electron. This will make more sense why in the perpendicular case. When we add in this parallel acceleration, the electron will emit radiation in the form of photons because accelerating charged particles radiate. Now this radiation is pure dipole radiation, shown by the yellow contours. The further out the contour is, the more intense the radiation in that direction. Therefore, most of the radiation is emitted perpendicular to the acceleration. Now this is for low velocity, that is, unrelativistic speeds. When you increase the velocity towards relativistic speeds, when beta gets closer to one, and gamma just grows, we notice the beaming effect, as we talked about earlier. The dipole starts getting pulled towards the direction of motion, and more and more radiation is emitted towards the velocity direction, as opposed to perpendicular to the acceleration. Here I've set beta to 0.5, that is one half of the speed of light, and you can see this beaming effect quite clearly. Now there's a common approximation to this beaming effect, and that is a cone of angular width, 1 over gamma. Therefore, the larger beta is, the more sharp this cone is. 
When we hit highly relativistic speeds, this 1 over gamma cone is a great approximation. In the limit as beta approaches c, all radiation is emitted exactly in the direction of the velocity. In later visualizations, I will use this 1 over gamma cone approximation to convey the direction of emitted radiation due to the beaming effect. Now let's look at a very similar case, but one that has a very different effect at low relativistic velocities. Again, starting out with an electron at constant velocity, now we introduce a perpendicular acceleration in the upwards direction. Remember that I am not visually showing how acceleration changes the motion in this particular case. That will be for the next visualization. When we increase the velocity, the beaming effect causes the right side to expand and the left to contract. As the velocity gets more relativistic, the left beam actually warps around the electron to beam rightwards. Thus we are able to once more use the 1 over gamma cone approximation in the highly relativistic cases. It is this perpendicular acceleration case that is most interesting to me, because circular motion has an always perpendicular acceleration with a constant velocity, and we observe circular motion all the time in physics. In physics, we deal very frequently with magnetic fields, and the crowning jewel of E&M, or electricity and magnetism, is how moving charges induce a magnetic field, and vice versa. Here we have a magnetic field pointing into the screen, symbolized by red X's, which are the tail ends of arrows that are pointing into the screen. Now we make an electron move perpendicularly through this magnetic field. This motion will cause the magnetic field to effectively create a sort of faux particle causing a force on our electron. This force is F equals Q times V cross B, and this cross product results in the force being perpendicular to both the velocity and the magnetic field. The force induces an acceleration perpendicular to the velocity at all times. You may know this as uniform circular motion, and you can see the electron moving in a circle. Furthermore, since the force is proportional to velocity, a larger velocity results in a greater diameter of the circle. This perpendicular acceleration will radiate according to the perpendicular beaming effect described earlier. Here I am using the 1 over gamma cone approximation. If we were to consider what an external observer would record, we notice that the beam is not visible at all times. This has effects in the intensity and frequency of observed light, whose complex physics is beyond the scope of this video. The case we just looked at was when velocity was perpendicular to the magnetic field. There is a simpler case when velocity is parallel to the magnetic field. We have the cross product of V cross B equal to zero. Therefore, there is no acceleration and the electron moves along as it did before. This allows us to use these two cases of V parallel and V perpendicular as a basis for arbitrary velocity. The perpendicular velocity creates a circle in the perpendicular plane. When you introduce the parallel velocity, this stretches it out into a helix. Since we have upgraded to another dimension, our 1 over gamma cone is in fact a cone. We can look at the extreme cases of V parallel and V perpendicular to show how they affect the outcome. We already know that increasing V perpendicular increases the radius of the circle. The interesting change is in V parallel. See how at low V parallel this looks very similar to the 2D perpendicular case. However, as we increase V parallel, the helix stretches and the beaming effect actually points the radiation in the direction of the magnetic field. Hopefully, the visualizations in this video have helped you to understand something about Einstein's relativity and how relativistic motion can really warp the physics of what happens, and specifically how the beaming effect causes radiation to point towards the direction of motion.